you from Lessons by the Lake. Today I want to talk to you about summarizing. So when I teach reading strategies in my classroom, I like to teach them in a concrete way, so I kind of want to walk you through that and what I do. So I want you to start by looking at your phone background. Why did you pick that picture? So mine is my little baby boy dressed as a cow on Halloween. So the picture represents a bigger story, right? It summarizes the moment of my baby's first time trick-or-treating, walking house to house, and just that one picture can summarize all those feelings and what happened that day. So the picture just captures that moment. So I like using the idea of pictures and photography when teaching summarizing. So a snapshot of a story is what a, summarize, a summary is. So it shows the most important details, not every single little thing that happened, like you don't see in a picture, like when you pick a picture for your background or to summarize something, you probably aren't gonna pick the picture of your baby crying or something going wrong. You're gonna pick the happy picture that inspires the most important lasting memories of what you're gonna think of from that day. So you need to help students think about summarizing a text in this way. We want them to pick out the most important, the most meaningful, what's gonna really tell the story, but not include every single last little detail. Part of how I teach reading strategies in my room is I like using concrete experiences. So when I introduce summarizing, I show them, I show the students a video recap of a recent football game. So whatever your local football team is, I just show the recap video on YouTube. They're usually about four or five minutes long. And I show them, oh, why does the time, it keeps jumping from 11 to seven. And I kind of pretend like I don't know how football works and say like, oh, like is that how time works in football? And they say, no, they're jumping around during the game. And I said, well, why, why, how can they make a three hour football game into a five minute video? And then students eventually get to, they're picking out the most important parts to tell the story of the game, the most meaningful throws, the touchdowns, the field goals. They're pulling out those important details. Not every little foul, every pass, they're not showing every detail, just the most important parts. And this helps to show them that real concrete idea of summarizing. So that's a fun activity to do. Another thing I like to do is ask them to tell me about their day. Can I write it up on the board? So. As they're telling me that they they brushed their teeth, they ate breakfast. So I then after they go through, I say, "Wow, you did all of that from your bed?" I'm like, well, no, I went to the bathroom. I'm like, well, you didn't tell me any of that. You didn't say you got out of bed, you walked to the bathroom. Why did you leave those details out? And then they realize it's because they're not the most important. That they're picking out the most important details that summarized what they did. Students naturally know how to summarize in this way when they go home and tell their parents about something that happened at school, if they're summarizing it. They know how to do this skill, we just need to help them transfer this to text, which is not as easy to do when it's not about yourself. So working off that idea of the snapshot and taking pictures is I use a character named Sophia the Summarizer, and she is a photographer who really is good at taking a snapshot to summarize a moment and a memory. And we talk about how do you pick out those important moments and she comes and she teaches. Um, I use somebody wanted but so then, but you can use this with first then next last. However you teach summarizing in your classroom, this can work that way. So she really helps ingrain a concrete foundational understanding for the students. She has a uh, profession and a gesture and a prop and all these concrete things that really show them what summarizing means. And then every day during shared reading, which is the first 10 to 15 minutes of our class, I am modeling a read aloud and I'm pausing to use Sophia to help me think aloud and notice the most important details. And there's a lot of things in the Sophia pack that we talk about the most important details and then as we go through the book, we look back and say, oh, was that really so important? Do maybe we can take that off? There's 
different graphic organizers to sort the details from interesting to important to unnecessary. Because while we're reading, something might seem really important, and then by later we realize, oh, we can move that over to the unnecessary or interesting column. So summarizing is a complex skill. It takes a lot of steps. You have to determine the importance. You have to think back over it. You have to sequence the events in order. So having students have this concrete relationship and understanding through Sophia the Summarizer, it really helps them to understand and build those good reader habits for how to summarize. Using concrete experiences like the football game and talking about their day, it helps them understand what it means to summarize. So I start every day with an activity for one to two minutes right at the beginning, just doing something like the football game just to give them that exciting, engaging hook to get them interested and get them like noticing that summarize is some, summarizing is something that we use outside of school too. So this is interesting and I want to learn this. And it really makes the whole experience interactive and meaningful for them. So you should try that with your kids. Pull up a, it doesn't have to be a football game, it could be any sport you want, and find a recap video and talk to them about it. Having those conversations outside of text are where those deep inspirational moments where students become great readers and understand how to comprehend the text on multiple levels, that's when that happens. So let me know if I can help you get started with any of this. I'll put some links below if you wanna learn more about how I do my shared reading or the concrete introductions, other ones that I use. I'm doing a series of videos right now, so I'm doing different little concrete activities for each reading strategy. So make sure you check out my channel so you can see the activities I use with other reading strategies. And let me know if I can help you. I would love to help you get started or if you have any questions. And thank you for stopping by.